thank you very much for uh, responding to Life Paris uh, invitation. Uh, we at uh, the committee are extremely privileged to host with us today Hala Warde, one of our most talented uh, Lebanese architects. Uh, Hala has won a public competition for the Lebanese pavilion at the coming Venice Biennale, uh, which will start as of the 22nd of May, 2021. In this one hour webinar, Hala will take us through the architectural uh, project, A Roof for Silence, that has emerged uh, despite the headwinds. She will also talk about the collaboration with the great artist and writer and poetess, uh, Etel Adnan. Uh, we feel overwhelmed in the current Lebanese dire situation to be able to talk about arts and to be so proud to have such talents. We need to support culture as it is one of the pillars defining a nation and its people. Uh, before uh, starting to talk about the project as such, I have a few questions uh, for Hala, given her rich career with some amazing achievements such as the Louvre Abu Dhabi and the collaboration with Jean Nouvel. Uh, please note that you can ask question in the uh, Q&A box and we'll use the last 20 minutes to answer them. Um, Hala, uh, thank you again for being with us. I know you are usually a discreet person despite um, all your talent. Uh, I'm curious to know what does it feel to work with one of the biggest architects of the current century, Jean Nouvel, and to have led the construction of the Louvre Abu Dhabi Museum? Uh, thanks, Maha. Thanks, everyone, for hosting me. Um, uh, yes, to answer your question, uh, Jean Nouvel uh, is someone I knew at school. He was my, my teacher uh, at the architectural school with uh, Paul Virilio. And I am um, completely immersed in his uh, philosophy of contextualism in architecture. Uh, it's a, a, an amazing experience to have been able to work uh, for 25 years in his uh, office because, uh, as I said, as, an, as, as a contextual architect, it's someone who uh, invents always something new depending on, on different places, different contexts. So I was lucky enough to travel all around the world uh, on, on working on various projects on, in the international. Uh, and the last ones that are long uh, uh, projects uh, uh, was um, a, a project in London uh, that I built uh, for him at uh, just behind St. Paul's Cathedral, one new change. And, and then uh, the last 15 years, which is very long, but normal for such an important project is the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And um, again, uh, a, a great experience, great privilege, and, uh, and um, we, we continue to, to have collaborations. But it's with the Louvre uh, uh, project um, 10 years ago that I decided to set up my own practice and to lead this project from my own uh, practice in partnership with Jean Nouvel, which was a very good way to work. Actually, it's still uh, ongoing because the museum uh, is, is still uh, needs to be taken care of. So we still have a lot of work uh, on this. There was uh, a little, uh, I mean, a lot of lots of stories uh, about uh, you having uh, won um, uh, the project of extension of the Lebanese Museum. I don't know whether you want to talk about it or not really in this uh, in this call. Uh, well, yeah, it's the most uh, um, terrible experience that I ever lived in a, uh, on a project. Uh, at the same time, a uh, fantastic uh, uh, competition subject, uh, and I was so um, happy and proud to be uh, selected uh, um, as a, with, with an international jury of a very high level to uh, build the, this museum in Beirut. Um, I, 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 do, I don't want to comment about it, but I, I wrote a, a tribune in the newspaper that uh, talks about it. It's, uh, um, I think it's, it's terrible for, um, for me as an architect, but more terrible is uh, 
uh, maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, hard what I will say, but more terrible is for the city of Beirut that I think that uh, um, building some such, uh, I mean, spoiling this important site is uh, is a disaster. So I was, I mean, uh, seeing what's happening now, what's happened in the last year, um, maybe nothing will happen, and this is the best thing that that could. Uh, still be in this site, but I think this site is worth uh, uh, better attention uh, from all the uh, people in charge, uh, and I hope something um, good will come on this uh, in this city. We hope so. Um, I mean, finally, I hear you're now working on a project in Marseille. Uh, it would be your second biggest project there. What, what are you doing exactly? Uh, it's the first project that I'm building in, in France, in, it's in Marseille, a very important project. Also, it was a, a, a short um, uh, competition uh, that I'm very happy to have won. And it's a huge challenge because I have uh, two very prestigious neighbors next to me. It's a tower on the, on the, on the sea. Uh, on my left, uh, um, Zaha Hadid's headquarters for CMA CGM, and on my right, Jean Nouvel's uh, La Marseillaise uh, building. So, um, uh, quite challenging, very exciting, uh, and I've uh, conceived a, a, a building uh, that is, uh, um, well, it will take time to talk about it, but let's say it, it, it's as, as integrated as possible in this universe of maritime universe and especially talks to uh, in dialogue with the sea that is that it is facing. Hopefully we'll, uh, it's the, the site's work has started so we are in the middle of and, and luckily hasn't stopped uh, with uh, in the last year. So we're um, the, it has broken ground um, um, a few months ago and will be delivered in, uh, in three years. Great. Uh, before I leave the floor to you, Hala, on the Biennale project, I would like to make a little quote from your presentation that, uh, I mean, that moved me. Um, it says, by resisting the shock of the 4th of August explosion, the roof, because of uh, the name, Roof of Silence, the roof is now offered to all those who have lost their own and its silence to their shouts. Thank you for this uh, moving uh, quote. Um, so now, uh, Hala, the floor is yours. Um, how did this project start? What was the drive? What does it represent, etc.? Please. Go ahead. Thank you, Maha. Um, yes, you, you, you're quoting something that was uh, um, written uh, a few a few months ago after the blast of Beirut. But uh, I need to tell the story from the beginning. And in a way, uh, I need to present you the project. I will do a very small introduction and then I will take you through a little film so you have a, 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 an immersion in the spirit of this project. But the project uh, really started um, early 2019 uh, when I was uh, working um, uh, in collaboration with Etel Adnan on a question that is an important question in my work of architect, which is the question of the relation between artworks and, uh, and architecture. Uh, when I say artworks, it's it's very large. It's it's the painting, it's music, it's poetry. Uh, Etel Adnan is a poet before being a painter, and she, and when she paints, she 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 uh, she paints like she writes poetry and vice versa. Uh, but um, there was this um, artwork that she painted, which is uh, um, based on um, inspired by olive trees, a series of sixteen paintings. Uh, on olive trees that I was uh, and, and I was already thinking of a building that would be born from this piece of art. So this is a question that I was working on. Um, this was before the competition. Then in, in to, uh, uh, summer 2019, uh, Hashim Sarkis was nominated uh, curator, general uh, curator, not curator, uh, commissaire, commissioner 
of the um, Biennale of Architecture. Uh, knowing that Lebanese was at, was at the head of this uh, very prestigious Biennale, um, Jacques Tabet, who is the president of the um, Art des Architectes in Beirut uh, and engineers, uh, went uh, and to see the Ministry of Culture and uh, decided to do, uh, for the first time in the history of uh, Lebanon, a national competition to represent uh, Lebanon at the Venice Biennale. Uh, the previous representation were always private uh, initiatives. So it's the first time this competition uh, was launched. Uh, it was launched very late in the process because all the countries that was part were participating were already um, had gone through this competition process, had already chosen their curators, etc. Anyway, so uh, everything happened in uh, August 2019. Uh, the competition launched and I participated with, uh, I, I don't know, I think there were 30 or 40 uh, uh, other architects for this um, uh, proposal. And my, my proposal was um, uh, a continuation of this question of um, uh, the, about architecture and art and this question that I'm uh, also uh, very um, uh, I mean developing in my architectural philosophy uh, that actually I developed in, uh, in uh, very much in my uh, Beirut project for the museum is the question of void in architecture and the necessity of void in architecture. So I did a proposal that is uh, based on this, um, because we're talking uh, uh, of um, architectural biennale and we need to um, also uh, be in line with the, the theme of the biennale is the, how do we live together? So it's a very large theme. Uh, and um, I, I thought this, uh, question of the olive, uh, this theme of the olive trees, which is a very symbolic representation of, uh, uh, of Lebanon, uh, and uh, a collaboration with Etel Adnan, who is a very important uh, uh, poet and artist of, uh, of Lebanon, could be um, a, a good start uh, to, to, to do a project. Uh, so we had this idea, and my, my proposal was to um, conceive, uh, invent uh, a sort of uh, uh, little building, uh, again, that was uh, um, invented or created to house these uh, paintings and to install it in a place uh, that in, in, in Beirut or uh, it had it didn't have a place actually to be to be placed but uh, again it's a sort of utopy uh, when, when I started working on it but uh, we were looking for a site that was going to be in relation with this artwork uh, so we went to look at different uh, sites and one of them uh, we found in the mountains of Lebanon uh, in a village called uh, Charlie, uh, has an ensemble of uh, 16 uh, olive trees that are told to be more than 2,000 years old with a legend that the, that the village people uh, like to talk about, which is that they are contemporary from, the, from Noah's Ark and I mean, it's, whether it's true or not doesn't really matter, but uh, the, the, there was this um, uh, uh, legend and m mythology about, uh, about this story of, um, of the dove um, um, uh, um, that was marking the end of the uh, deluge. I don't know how you say in English. Anyway, the biblical uh, story of Noah. Uh, and of course, uh, this, this reference to, to the peace. Uh, all ingredients that are very linked to Lebanon, because it's a, a, a country of uh, myth and legends. Uh, and uh, at the same time, um, uh, uh, reflection um, and thinking about um, a real uh, architectural question uh, of um, uh, the, the necessity 
of, uh, of void, when I say void, it's gardens, it's courtyards, it's things like this in, in an urban fabric, uh, and especially in Beirut. Uh, so my project is about all this. Uh, what I wanted, before I go further, because I'm, maybe I'm going too much into theory, I would like you to, uh, to go through a little um, sneak peek that we've done. Um, maybe you won't understand everything, it doesn't matter, but I need, um, I thought it would be a good uh, way to have a short immersion in, in the um, uh, uh, in the un uh, visual and, uh, and um, l'univers sonore et visuel uh, that, I'm, um, that I'm talking about. So I'm, uh, I'm going to, it's just a few minutes, two or three minutes, and then I, I'll, I'll come back to you. That's great. We took out the sound, there's a sound composition, but this is a, a film that um, we've done. You will see the question that I'm asking. Maybe I can say them in... Uh... If the sound is too... we can take it off. It's, it's okay so far. This, these are photogrammetries of the trees. This is a print of the blast. Okay, so this is um, uh, extracts of uh, different visuals that we are uh, using into in the uh, in, in the project. 
what I will try to do now is um, show you the, the installation. Uh, but you've seen um, uh, the artwork that I was talking about. Uh, you've seen the. Je sais pas comment on va sur le... Sorry, I, I'm trying to. So I will. I will continue to talk. Uh, we've done. Uh, so I was talking about these olive trees that we that we saw in Lebanon. Uh, I, I went to visit them because they are still living. Uh, um, trees, uh, and I was really um, uh, impressed by their um, uh, uh, architecture because they are pieces of architecture by their space because they have big uh, voids where you go inside. And I was struck by the res uh, resemblance with a work uh, of uh, Paul Virilio, who is a very important uh, thinker and. Uh, philosopher and who wrote a lot about the question of um, uh, sorry I'm still uh, uh, well just to show you uh, the, I'm showing you extracts of, of the documents that we've done to tell you an example, this is a little uh, picture, but here, for example, is only one tree. This is the biggest one. It's so big, it has like five or six meters inside. It's, it's uh, grown so large that uh, it's demultiplied the, its trunk. But uh, this tree is a space where the village people come to uh, talk, have discussions, or even uh, uh, have dialogues and I was uh, again struck by these by these trees and the resemblance with this work of Paul Villerio who worked on something called Les Zantiformes where he painted the void uh, between spaces. It's a very important question in architecture and in, and in territories uh, that um, this, this need of um, of void, which is uh, in uh, in relation uh, with the space. I mean, the void is for the space. What the silence is in music, uh, and very important sequences for um, uh, uh, people in a in a in a, ter in a territory in a city, etc. Uh, just to show you, these are scans of the trees, and I'm putting together. I'm doing a little manifesto of architecture that is linked to this question. Uh, these are the trees that uh, I've, I've seen in, um, uh, and that exist. And the coincidence is that these uh, 16 olive trees at the, in Charlie that uh, I've asked the photographer Fouad al Khouri to come with me to photograph. So we have very beautiful pictures from him. These are just extracts from this. But the coincidence is that Etel Adnan who uh, 4,000 years later and 4,000 kilometers uh, uh, far has painted exactly the same number of paintings, 16 paintings, without knowing that these trees existed. So it was like a sign that uh, I'm putting together this very ancient uh, um, piece of the nature with this contemporary piece of art. Uh, and we're going to show uh, at the same time, uh, the pictures and the, and the paintings in the pavilion. But I wanted to show more than the, this and, I've, uh, uh, and, and to tell also this story about the legend about, and, and to give a sensation uh, about the space and the light, which is very important there. Uh, and so I asked uh, uh, to, um, uh, a filmmaker to accompany me to film the, the olive trees. And we went last year, all this is happening early 2020. Uh, and we went to film this and we have a very um, interesting film uh, on, on the olive trees. So just quickly, the pavilion that I've submitted in the, competition, in the competition was just an introduction on the question of the void. This central piece that I have conceived uh, for, to house the work of Etel Adnan and uh, a, a, tr a tr triptych uh, with a projection of the trees. 
uh, we found an, a very nice space, an, a very interesting space in Venice called Le Magazzini del Sale, which is a much uh, uh, larger space than the one I had expected. And we, uh, it's here. It's just behind the Punta della Dogana. Uh, it has uh, different uh, magazzini in uh, uh, which are spaces very, very narrow and very long. Uh, you have, for example, the Vedova Foundation that Trenzo Piano had, uh, has done. You have the Musée des Beaux-Arts uh, uh, and different spaces. So we're, we're, we decided to go there and to put this pavilion in this space which is uh, very well connected to the, to the Arsenale and the Biennale uh, with a direct link. And, and at the same time, you see the Biennale will be here. This is San Marco and there's a direct connection to this space. So uh, this, this to give you an, an, a visual of the, of, uh, it's, it's a very, very interesting space. You see the, the K that, um, that is here is so narrow that when you have the, the light going on the water it enters and you have light vibration vibrating very far inside and my piece will be at the end here and it's a it, it's in reference to olive trees that uh, that shine in the sun it will be like a like a silver object which is here so it's a piece here at the end which is the last piece that we see when we enter inside you have the door like this you enter like this. You have the you have a first uh, introduction with the, the, the pieces of Virgilio that will be alone from the Saint Pompidou. Then I will put this in relation with the photogrammetry. Photogrammetry are the scans that we took from the trees. I'm just putting this in in relation. Then on the floor uh, there will be something I, I will talk uh, later about this, but it's something about the um, in, uh, prints and. Uh, uh, traces of uh, of this different uh, 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 different visuals is antifor. Uh, then we will go around this object, this mysterious object that you don't know what it is exactly. You will be in a in a projection here with the film that we have done on the olive trees. And last part, you will enter into this uh, piece. So it's called a roof for silence. I must say that this uh, title, a roof for silence was the one I gave uh, to this project uh, uh, again. We are in September 2019. Uh, nothing of all the catastrophes that happened after had happened. Uh, and the project very um, is, interestingly was announced by the ministry, uh, Minister of Culture and uh, the uh, art is architect, so the winning comp uh, uh, and the award of my project was announced on the 16th of October 2019. So this was just a day before um, the country, um, well, uh, fell into uh, chaos, if we can say, uh, talk like this. So the following day, it was, everything became, uh, um, very complicated and our project was really put into uh, jeopardy because we we were left without any support neither by the uh, ministry of culture or the or any um, help from anyone to to do this project so uh, we've taken this and we've tried to go through this uh, um, very uh, difficult year uh, since October 2019 with the revolution, with the um, economic crisis, with the COVID uh, to, uh, until the, the blast of uh, August um, last year. Uh, and, um, and this blast came, I mean, like um, something absolutely incredible uh, in the uh, to be uh, integrated in the project. I mean, again, uh, Maha, you were um, quoting this uh, a roof for silence. Uh, the blast was exactly the, the opposite of this, and the need for people after the blast was, uh, of course, a roof because everyone lost their roof and silence because they, uh, I mean, it's, it, you ask anyone what they want 
uh, today uh, and people who are very directly touched by this and uh, the answer is very um, direct is, is this question of silence, which is very, very important. So um, this work is like a cycle because you it started, uh, as I told you, in a linear way with an artwork. But at the same time, I could say that the beginning of the project could be uh, the 4th of August because it talks exactly about the same thing. And uh, on, on, on the floor here, I wanted to put at the beginning uh, traces at a large scale of olive trees, just to give the sense of these spaces. The olive trees are in relation with the antiform of Virgo, but when you take, I will show you later, you see these are traces that we were showing, but when you look at uh, one image, this is the antiform, uh, I will go, voila. This for me, I think, is the, is the strongest image that I've um, seen and know about what happened on the 4th of August. It's a, very, it's a scientific image from the NASA, I think everyone knows it, but it shows the, the wound uh, of, of the, of the, the uh, blast. Uh, and what we did is that we uh, very, um, uh, in a simple way, uh, because I, I didn't want to, it was very important to evoke this, but this is the trace of the wound. These are the, the les antiformes, talking about the void, and these are the olive trees uh, traces. And you can see how uh, uh, you have this uh, really visual, relation, not talking about the sense that it means. And I'm going to show this in a very uh, subtle way on, on the floor, very simply, in silence, uh, to evoke um, this question of, uh, of the city, because uh, it's a tragedy, of course, this blast, but it's also uh, the beginning of something because it's, it's the end of, uh, I mean, a lot of destruction, but uh, I think it's important to give uh, a, a vision and, and a hope uh, in terms of um, uh, the vision of the city and to see how it can, something new can start from this, exactly like after a, um, a, a, an eruption volcanic, a volcano uh, where it, it's something uh, uh, covers the ground and you have something new that will, uh, that will come up. So uh, it's important to give a, a message of hope with this. Again, I'm not uh, saying anything, it's uh, just uh, um, uh, witnessing this, uh, these, um, uh, this correspondence between, uh, between those three themes. Uh, the immersion in the film, I would like to show you, but it, it will be, I don't know if we can do it, but in terms of the, the movie, it's a very, very um, uh, interesting immersion in the, in the olive trees. You must know that these olive trees in Chile are in a, a zone that is not, not uh, uh, very friendly. There's a road that uh, goes in, in the middle of the trees. You have buildings close to the trees, so it was extremely difficult and, and um, you know, they, they don't realize the treasure, I mean, maybe the village people do, but no one knows really how important they are. Uh, so when we wanted to film them, the, the idea that we had was to, um, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, to plunge them into the night, to do it by night. So we erased all the context and we came with, uh, with artificial light to, to do this, um, this film in collaboration with um, uh, L'Ecole du Frenois, who helped me with this because we had very little uh, uh, means to work, actually also almost nothing. So uh, all our team worked for a year uh, on this without any uh, help. And uh, it's very lucky and almost a miracle that we are here today with this production of a film, with this piece that we are uh, hopefully going to build, with the loans that are going to be uh, done by the Saint Pompidou, by the 
collector for uh, Ether, uh, uh, with the um, acceptance of the of the rent of this incredible space in Venice. Uh, so I think it's a, it's an, a really a big, big opportunity and we're fighting to, to make it happen uh, to have this uh, presence in, in Lebanon, uh, in, in Venice of um, uh, this Lebanese pavilion with, that is talking not only about the, the theme itself, but on, on uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, pieces of, of culture and people related to culture. A poet, uh, an artist, a photographer, uh, a filmmaker, um, and, uh, and it's, it's all about uh, what is uh, really the essence um, of our country. Uh, I don't know how we sort of this truc. Um, um, maybe it was a little bit uh, confusing. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm talking. There's so many things in this project. I want to mention something uh, about it. That uh, Venice is, of course, a, a very important venue, and we're going to talk about um, it's an architecture biennale, and and there's a, a, a place there that will be. Uh, a, a very important uh, 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 platform to talk about um, uh, Lebanon, of course, and, and culture in Lebanon, of course, but also to try to uh, um, reorient uh, interest in everything that is uh, uh, related to the reconstruction in Beirut. So we found, we, we founded, uh, um, we settled an association called A Roof for Silence, the name of the project, um, that is, uh, uh, the first purpose was to help the, the fundraising for, for uh, this project in, uh, in Venice, but beyond Venice, to uh, be able to uh, take this pavilion outside of uh, uh, Venice in uh, important uh, uh, countries, but to start with uh, in, uh, um, in Beirut uh, temporarily to um, uh, maybe uh, uh, in, in the, in the uh, National Museum for a while uh, or a temporary exhibition. We're in, in discussion on, on this with these people uh, in Paris, in London, in, um, in everywhere, all over the world, uh, to, um, uh, uh, yes, to show, to show this, uh, this message uh, and, and uh, to be like a cultural ambassador, let's say, of, uh, of, our, uh, of our country. So uh, we, we, we hope that during the Biennale Venice, we will be able to continue to uh, uh, to raise interest and uh, funds to to be able to do this um, uh, itinerance uh, itinerance. I don't know if you say this in English uh, of of this uh, all over the world. Uh, we've been uh, we had a, a great help with this association from the. Institut de France and an association called Fondation pour le Liban. And uh, thanks to them, uh, we, we were um, able to uh, uh, collect uh, funds that arrived really in the last month, which was uh, the, the last miracle that happened and that made us uh, um, optimistic to uh, make this. Uh, uh, pavilion happen in Venice, but we're still uh, uh, working on uh, uh, reaching more to uh, cover uh, the rest of the costs. So, uh, Hala, thank you very much. I don't know whether you can hear me. Yes, I do. Uh, I can. This was amazing, very touching. Uh, it shows that, uh, I mean, your message about um, uh, how to live together uh, goes obviously uh, beyond Lebanon, but is very important to Lebanon. So hopefully it will be understood uh, very well at the Biennale. 
And um, in terms of budget, uh, from what I understood, you had reached almost uh, three quarters of uh, the financing need. And there is a little bit uh, north of 100,000 uh, uh, euros still to cover uh, in order to uh, uh, to cover all the costs. So uh, what can be done is if um, um, the, the participants can uh, know of uh, um, companies that uh, sponsor um, uh, artwork, and there are many that have the budget for that, uh, so that could be amazing if uh, you know of uh, such uh, enterprises. Please either let me know or send uh, an email uh, to paris at lifelebanon.com and uh, obviously I will put you in touch with, uh, with Hala. Uh, obviously private donations are most welcome and Hala mentioned uh, that um, uh, there is a tax incentive for that. But I guess uh, if we can reach uh, enterprises, that would be amazing. So uh, I think we have covered uh, most of the presentation. Thank you very much. It was quite exhaustive beyond what I would have expected in terms of information that you have given us uh, on this project. Uh, I don't know whether there are questions. Uh, yeah, there are yes, a couple. There are. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, Alia is asking about a few words about the budget need. Uh, yes. Um, the, the total budget, uh, including the space, I mean, the space is uh, 100,000 and the project itself is 300. We have uh, 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 three out of the four. So uh, we're, we're missing another 100,000 uh, euros. Uh, we're talking euros on this project. So, and we hope we can raise them in the last month. Uh, we we um, prior, prioritized uh, the spaces we, and the installation. We would like to go do a book, but we don't know if we can afford it. So the, la the last things that we would love to do uh, and apart paying the person, the people who worked on the project, which uh, didn't happen yet, including the ones who did the films and uh, is, um, is for this, so we, we are missing another hundred thousands that we would like to to raise, uh, uh, hopefully in the next uh, month, if it's possible. Thanks, Hala. I have a question from EG. It's a long one. Thanks for the good image and message you are spreading about Lebanon. Rebounding on your beautiful quote on the roof of silence and given the actual situation in Lebanon, talented architects in Lebanon will have unfortunately less roofs to build and less opportunities to shout loud their talents. So my question is, how can we help talented architects living in Lebanon to have access to international projects? Um, um, I mean, uh, the, the, I think the 40 people who participated in this uh, competition were talented architects and, uh, and, um, and, you know, do more competition, do more public uh, actions in Lebanon, which is uh, something that is completely now impossible. So. I don't know how to act to answer this question. I, I would like to be able to, but I, I I don't have at all an answer to this question, um, because uh, the, the the system of architecture, unfortunately, everywhere. It's not because I'm outside of Lebanon here in Paris, but uh, to have access to international projects is uh, is something that is always. Uh, there is a process of competitions and the only way to access them is through competitions. So they, they should participate uh, like we all do into competitions. The difficulty is that it is uh, extremely, extremely difficult to, to access this. And it's not at all, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to uh, answer this question, especially for the Lebanese. I mean, it's, it's the same question could uh, be for anyone all over the world. 
I don't think that the these architects are, are, are not, are, don't have access less than other architects all over the world to international projects. So. Okay, thanks, uh, Hannah. I have a question uh, from Hannah Isha. Avez-vous informé la population locale de ce projet et comment comptez-vous le leur présenter? Merci. Uh, well, I will. Uh, um, I, I don't know who knows about this project, but it was uh, announced uh, very briefly in a, in a press release uh, when it was uh, um, awarded in uh, September, October 2019. And we are planning to do a press uh, conference uh, on the 16th of March. We symbolically choose uh, a, a 16 because the 16 is a number that is following us in this project. Uh, so in, it, this is next week. So next week there will be a press conference uh, with uh, journalists from all over the world and uh, including Lebanese uh, people. So uh, I think that after this presentation, the project will become public. Okay, I have a thank you, Hala, from Antoine Chaya, who's participating in this uh, in this webinar. Um, then I have a question from, uh, and obviously this is another very talented uh, architect. Uh, so we are uh, uh, very honored to have two of our very talented architects in this webinar. Um, I have a question from MSY. How much of the budget was covered by foreigners versus Lebanese? Life can't help with the rest. I let you answer the first one and I'll try and answer the second one. Well, I must say that um, almost uh, maybe 80% are foreigners vs Lebanese. Okay. From what we okay. have. It's a, a big number of foreigners. I mean, for the very simple reason that Lebanese uh, uh, have, um, I mean, other priorities uh, and, and it was very difficult uh, even for me to uh, reach out. I tried to, but uh, you can imagine all the reasons why it was difficult for Lebanese. But we, we um, I really hope the Lebanese that are outside of the country and that can uh, help uh, could, could do so. Um, for the next question, I cannot answer it. Yes, I will. Uh, obviously, um, LIFE, as you know, uh, is um, an association that is dedicated to um, support uh, uh, students, um, would they be in Lebanon or abroad, to reunite the Lebanese that work in finance, but now in other businesses, uh, such as uh, IT, such as uh, lawyers, etc. Um, and uh, the funds that uh, we are given and trusted with are uh, destined uh, in, in the bylaws to, uh, to help a specific project, which is uh, giving scholarships to students. So we have like 200 uh, scholars that we follow if, if they study for four years. So it is uh, a scholarship times uh, four years. We have recently, after the blast, have had an exceptional uh, um, uh, fundraiser, uh, which is the Beirut Emergency Fund. And there we raised uh, north of $8 million. Uh, but uh, this was closed. Uh, and the funds were uh, distributed to NGOs, um, Arc-en-Ciel, Beit el-Baraka, and uh, all the rest probably uh, something like 20 NGOs in Lebanon benefited from uh, this money. So given the specificity of life, uh, we cannot ask the association to do so, but obviously we can ask the individuals to uh, participate in this uh, fundraiser if they have affinity. And this is why we offered to, uh, uh, for Hala, uh, uh, who uh, reach out to us uh, to see what we can do together, um, a, a, the possibility to talk to uh, the LIFE um, uh, members. So uh, that's it. And we'll try and help and see in terms of uh, enterprises and, and sponsorships 
uh, and obviously there is the, this uh, fiscal incentive that was mentioned. I have a question. Uh, no, I have, ah, Anne Grange is saying, what a wonderful project. Thank you uh, for all this. My question, do you have already interests from Finland for the touring of, of this exhibition? I would love to propose some option. Uh, not Finland. I would love to go to Finland. We have interest from the Musit, uh, museum in, uh, uh, in Stockholm, but not in Finland. So, uh, uh, very interested in your uh, proposal. Okay, so uh, Anne, uh, please uh, send uh, on uh, Paris at lifelebanon.com and we'll transfer to Halla. Um, then uh, I have uh, from Hannah Ishak again. Merci Hala pour cette présentation et pour la profondeur de ce message d'architecture et pour ce cri. Then I have Antoine Chaya. The COVID context, are you planning to provide online access to this event? Uh, Antoine, uh, if you hear me, I, I really hope I will never be um, uh, obliged to do so. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, um, architecture and especially this installation is about uh, uh, sensation, sensitivity, immersion, and uh, uh, it would be really a pity to, to see it on a screen. I mean, I'm already suffering talking to you. Uh, through a screen here, and it's, uh, I, I think it would be uh, not a good thing. So let's be optimistic. And even if people can't go uh, on uh, in, in May, which is uh, actually the Denali confirmed uh, this opening in May uh, in, um, in Venice, 20th of May, 22nd, and, but it will last six months. So hopefully uh, people, depending on where they come from, will be able to travel and to, uh, first of all, in this beautiful city and secondly, in this beautiful space uh, that is housing this uh, project. So um, I'm not a big, uh, a good, a big fan of, uh, of virtual uh, online uh, whatever things. Thanks. We are left with four minutes and two questions. Uh, one from Hadi Farah. Hala, uh, great work. Are the dates uh, definitely set for the Biennale? I guess you answered it is 22nd of May. Yes. And May. what will be, what will the artwork become after it ends? Yeah, the, the artwork is already in, uh, uh, the, uh, in the hands of uh, private collectors. And it is um, uh, currently uh, being uh, uh, part of a donation to a French museum. So uh, during the Biennale, it will become the pro pro propriété of, uh, of a French museum. So uh, the, the itinerance of the project and the, will depend on the acceptance from this French museum to lend it and to have it uh, um, travel in any other venues. So it will become a part of this collection, the Musée d'Art Musée Moderne de la Ville de Paris. Thank you, Hala. One final uh, uh, remark from Alia. Ce n'est pas une question, mais c'est intéressant de noter que Samas, le pavillon de Zad Multaka à Venise, avait été exposé en Finlande. Bon, donc, euh, <rire> si Zad l'a fait, Allah pourra le faire. <rire> euh, voilà, je pense que nous sommes euh, absolument euh, dans les temps. Euh, mille merci, Hala, pour ton énergie. Euh, pour Merci. ton savoir-faire. Enfin, ça fait des années que nous sommes tous admiratifs. Euh, et, et on espère que ce sera bien, enfin, tout se passera bien et euh, que ce sera un, un, un beau message pour le monde d'ouverture et, et, comme tu l'as dit, de vivre ensemble. Merci, Mara. J'espère que vraiment, on... on... On essaye encore et on se bat. Et j'ai dit déjà à la Biennale, 
euh, et à tous les pays qui nous écoutaient quand on a eu le long webinar que si on arrive à Venise, ça sera un vrai miracle, mais on fait tout pour que ce miracle euh, arrive. Et ça sera grâce à, à, à toutes les contributions, mais euh, y compris des petites. Euh, on a, on, je pense que la, la mobilisation et l'intérêt général euh, vont être d'une grande aide. On a, beaucoup de, euh, on a eu déjà euh, des, beaucoup de gens qui nous ont aidés, mais il nous en manque encore. Donc je compte euh, euh, sur vous si c'est possible ou ceux qui nous écoutent. Donc concrètement, Hala, les gens vont et font une donation euh, sous l'égide de la Fondation de France non, il y a deux façons de donner. On a notre association qui est une association qui existe, oui. donc on peut faire des dons directs, mais euh, ça dépend de la volonté de défiscaliser ou pas. Si euh, le donateur souhaite défiscaliser, il, il passe à travers la Fondation pour le Liban. Il y a un lien euh, que je vous donnerai à travers l'Institut de France. Si les donateurs n'ont pas besoin, on ne souhaite pas défiscaliser, ils peuvent faire un don direct à notre association Roof for Science, dont on donnera aussi les, les éléments. Voilà, donc il y a deux façons de donner. D'accord, c'est super. Bon, j'ai juste un remerciement de la part de Roland Ziadé. Euh, voilà. Merci, Hala. Merci mille fois, Mara. Euh, voilà. Merci. Ok. Euh, merci à tous. Merci et, à, euh, à tous et ceux qui on est très fiers et on espère que ça va se passer. Euh, J'ai le lien euh, qui a été partagé par euh, Hala Mejihan aussi pourra le faire, euh, foundationforlebanon.org, donc vous pouvez aller là-dessus. Ok, merci à tous. Merci pour tout, merci à tout le monde, je ne les connais pas mais je ne les vois pas, mais voilà. Euh, à très bientôt. Merci Hala. À, à Venise, merci. venez tous à Venise. On viendra. Vous ne regretterez pas. Uh, Maya Absad, the great presentation and impressive architect. Uh, Hanna Isha, merci. Bon, on va arrêter là. Bon, de compliments. Euh, et, 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 ça bague, merci beaucoup, passionnant. Merci. On viendra à Paris. Nous viendrons. Bon, merci voilà, merci à tous. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir.